Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues. With this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on Series 9, Episode 1 of Doctor Who, The Magician's Apprentice. With many, many big-time thanks to my friend Howard from across the pond, who made it available to me. Um, just absolutely brilliant, sir. Thank you very much. And <laughs> talk about a freaking amazing opening um at least to me like i'm left with goosebumps and i'm left just being juiced because from the get-go from the opening you know we're, we're following around that sliced salami looking dude whatever you want to call him um who's looking for the doctor we've seen sort of uh whispers of somebody is looking for the doctor in the two precursors the little shorts and everything the one set on karn which really just uber stoked me you know got me really juiced and really excited and then the second one, um, you know, the doctor's meditation or whatever, I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny, um, but it wasn't quite as on the same level of getting me excited as the one set on Karn. Um, but of course, with the opening of this episode, I am completely on edge. I'm like, what? is going on um you know this war-torn uh scenario you have this child running through the mud and everything and he's getting sort of hounded by a soldier who wants to know how did he get on the battlefield the whole thing with the hand mines just got under my skin really got me unnerved i mean we're existing on a world where giant holes do crop up in the earth's crust and you have people thinking of all these different conspiracy theories government operations alien interventions all these wacky you know things they try to uh rifle off and explain it away when it's just you know sinkholes it's nature it's that kind of thing and these are really threatening things to the environment to homes to lives and and such like that wherever they crop up depending on where they crop up and so you add in that doctor who twist that flavor of you know here are these hand mines that reach up out of the ground they have eyes it's almost like the t-rex thing from jurassic park where as long as you don't move they don't necessarily see you or perceive you but if they do if you move even the slightest inch they'll grab onto you and they suck you down to your demise and it's just like whoa <laughs> i was freaking out and on edge that entire time of course the doctor intervenes to try to save the life of this kid and then you get the name drop. <laughs> and if you're watching this video, this is your first, last, and only spoiler warning. You should have probably already watched the episode. Um, otherwise, avoid the Noid. Seriously, you don't want to be spoiled for this one. Um, and I'm so very gracious that a couple of my friends on Facebook were like, okay, well, something got leaked. Avoid that. Don't come online. You know, you're going to stumble onto something if you don't want to be spoiled. I got warnings ahead of time. <laughs> so here is your first, last, and only warning spoilers ahead and so yeah um <laughs> this kid when the doctor is trying to save him he throws him a sonic screwdriver he's got that sort of acoustic uh whatever he called it tunnel that allows them to speak and so you know these hand minds don't react and he's like tell me the name of the boy who decides to live today my name is davros <laughs> like i almost lost my mind um the history between the Doctor and Davros is on par, is on parallel as being just absolutely tantamount to such relationships as the Doctor and the Master, the Doctor and the Daleks, the Doctor and the Cybermen, and all these other villains. Um, it's up there. And I don't necessarily mean as far as, you know, reoccurring villain characters in the history of Doctor Who. I mean the personal connection the back and forth of those characters, the dynamics between them, is ever-present in the history of Doctor Who. Even with the first serial, the first Dalek serial, we're not introduced to Davros till many years later, but his stamp, you know, is kind of ever-present if you look at it from that character perspective and that story perspective and the creation of the Daleks. And then, of course, as the fourth incarnation of the Doctor, Tom Baker's incarnation, whom we see in this episode, I loved that they called back on that rich history. Not only playing the audio, but seeing, you know, the video portion and that tantamount moment of Genesis of the Daleks, the one everyone remembers, where the Doctor's mulling over, can I do this? Can I be responsible for wiping out the Daleks, knowing what they are, knowing what they become? And he he kind of faltered under the weight of that. He didn't want to be, you know, become the monster. And in that serial, you know, you have 
the first one-on-ones really, or at least <laughs> to we the viewer in the chronology of the, uh, you know, airing of this series, you have just that tremendous mountainous back and forth, that give and sway and give and take of Davros versus the Doctor. And there's that very sort of, I feel like we're building up and we're coming full circle to the genesis of the Daleks in the sequence where, you know, basically the Doctor puts to Davros, if you had the chance to, you know, come into the possession of a little capsule with a virus contained within that could wipe out an entire world, would you want to be godlike in the possession of it? Would you want to command the life or death of an entire world? And Davros, being very megalomaniacal, of course, he he gets off on that. That's like, yes, I want that. I want that ability. And now we have this boy, you know, revealed to us as being Davros as a child. And the whole episode is a big question. Does the Doctor leave him to die? Or did he go back to save him? Is the guilt that he carries, that everyone is perceiving, you know, uh, basically Clara and Missy, when they crop up in this episode, is the guilt they can perceive and read on his face when they finally catch up with him? In the past, by the way, rocking out with like Van Halen-style riffs and, and Roy Orbison and all this kind of stuff. Love, love rock and roll doctor. <laughs> Capaldi's the man. You know, no ifs, ands, or buts. But I mean, is that guilt because he left Davros to die and thus created the monster who would then forevermore seek out vengeance on the entirety of the universe, go on to create the Daleks in his stead to be the utmost of, of you know, military might and purity in his own twisted estimation? Or was it? in fact, that the Doctor saved this young boy. And thus, the mind would eventually evolve into a twisted nature, become the Davros who created the Daleks, thus the Doctor's to blame, one way or the other. Either way, he's to blame. Whether, you know, he, he made this boy seek vengeance and, and sort of a rapture in that vengeance, or whether he just saved a life and it became a monster in any way, shape, or form, he feels the guilt. He's carrying that with him. And I'm hoping we're going to find out. Because, of course, we leave off with that cliffhanger of him going back, air quotes, from the future, exterminate. I think he's probably going to shoot all the hands, you know, the hand mines and everything, um, which, again, just unnerved the hell out of me, chilled the hell out of me. Um, and then, of course, the whole aspect with the planes being stopped, that was kind of kooky, uh, you know, I was kind of like, what, what's going on here? But I actually really loved that Missy had a hand in that. I was like, this can't be Davros trying to get the Doctor's attention, right? I mean, really? Parlor tricks, games? And that's exactly what Missy describes this as when uh, finally she has all of those snipers. And I loved, you know, Kate Stewart and Unit being involved. <laughs> Clara's working in tandem with them. They're trying to get in contact with the Doctor. You got, oh, Missy, you so fine, you know, on the computer screen. Absolutely loved it. Michelle Gomez is just freaking awesome and amazing in this role. Um, if you didn't believe it, the past few times we've seen her watching this episode alone, it's like, you can't not love this character, this modern incarnation of the Master, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then she's often, you know, all the unit guys, the, the sort of, uh, you know, spy dudes or whatever have surrounded this area, the snipers and everything, keeping a watchful eye. And she's got the Vortex Manipulator. They go back in time once they figure out where the Doctor's located. And he's got the tank. <laughs> he's rocking out with the axe. I loved all of that. Did not see, even after watching, uh, you know, that short, did not see that that guy uh, with the axe that he was supposed to have the duel with or whatever, you know, was like a Dalek agent or a conversion, whatever you want to call it. That was a surprise. Um... But then, of course, his willingness and Snake Dude, of course, with all the... Ugh, I didn't like that at all. Um, but he's in there to, you know, warp them to this 
space station in the future or whatever it is or what we're supposed to believe is one until you see Scarrow. It's actually Scarrow and all this stuff. They've rebuilt it. They brought it back. Which is it? You know, who knows? Um, for those following along with the incontinuity of Doctor Who, it's been both destroyed and or, uh, you know, moved several times. So it's like, which incarnation is this? Is this the definitive incarnation now? <laughs> who knows? Um, but the point is, it's Scarrow. And it's classic series Scarrow. It's the first Dalek serial Scar Scarrow. And I'm just goosebumps. I am just, you know, ear to ear grinning. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> because when you see all the Daleks and all the different kinds of Daleks, the only Daleks we don't really see, uh, at least I think, unless I missed something, were like the new paradigm. And I'm just dying to know where the hell they are. That's still a, a lingering complaint from series five. <laughs> where the hell did the new paradigm go? I would love to see more. You know, they bested the Doctor and everything. Um, but I digress. You know, with this episode just building up to that crescendo. And of course you have, you know, they want to destroy the TARDIS. They've gotten their hands on it. They have Clara and Missy for all intents and purposes. And they are they seemingly exterminate them. I don't believe it for one minute. Just because I feel like the last time we saw Missy in Series 8, she erupted into this blue energy, and it was unlike anything we'd thus far seen whenever she would vaporize somebody. It was, it was like a teleport effect, rather than a, a vaporization. Um, and it looked to my eye, or realize I'm watching this on a mobile screen, um, but it looked to my eye like that kind of effect. Like maybe those vortex manipulators, upon detecting an energy burst or something like that, would, would move them somewhere else, you know, to the left or whatever it is. And the TARDIS, well, that doesn't account for the TARDIS. I don't know whether the TARDIS was successfully destroyed, if the Doctor's just being made to believe that is the case, as well as their deaths and everything, to be manipulated into a corner by Davros. This is where it comes full circle, like I said, with this cliffhanger, because it seems as though Davros is trying to manipulate the Doctor to a point where either he snaps and he goes back and he kills Davros, or, as we see the preview for the next episode, he's trying to give the Doctor, in in sort of a metaphorical term, that capsule with the virus contained within. He's trying to give him the capability of wiping out the Daleks committing genocide in one fell swoop. And does that reach beyond time? Does that mean all eras of the Daleks? Or just this current incarnation, this entire world of Skaro? Um, you know, be filled though it may be with many incarnations of Daleks. It's as though Davros, in his apparently allegedly dying moments, is trying to put forth the reality of that scenario and put it into the Doctor's hands. His final punishment to bring back that dilemma. Can I destroy the monsters, thus becoming the monster myself? And following on the footsteps, on the coattails of his entire dilemma in Series 8, where he's, am I a good man? Am I, have I made the right choices? Am I doing good in the universe? And knowing, at least if you believe the rumors, and, and this is kind of like the limit of the rumors that I've actually paid attention to, um, but if he's actually going to revisit Pompeii, how that face that craggy face with the angry eyebrows, how that face was chosen, what that face means to the greater purposes in the history of the Doctor. That could all come into play in the aftermath of Series 8 and this particular dilemma as presented and sort of, you know, chuffed up by Davros in this moment. And, um, yeah, it was just gangbusters. Uh, Frickin' loved it. I mean, again, there were goofy aspects, like the things with the planes being stopped over, you know, the skies all over the world. Um, when they did mention the fact that that's a lot of fuel, and that could, you know, be one hell of an explosion. <laughs> then I was like, okay, I'm paying attention now. Um, this is a little less ridiculous. And then when Missy was involved, it's like, hell yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, just... I cannot wait. I'm chomping at the bit to see how this plays out. I don't expect for one minute that, you know, Clara and Missy are gone. The TARDIS, I doubt, is gone, but it's like, what happened? I'm going to be waiting for the explanation there. And um, what, you know, how is this going to play out? What is the Doctor going to do? Is he going to unravel the entirety of history and kill Daros as a child? Did he go back, in fact, to save him and he's just there to exterminate, air quotes, all the hands? What was 
the real event as it initially played out? And is he going back to make sure it plays out that way? Or is he trying to change it? And if so, how? <laughs> you know, did he at first leave Davros there to die and now he's going back to save him? Did he at first save Davros and now he's going back to correct a mistake? Just absolutely tremendous, mountainous events in the history of Doctor Who. You know, the entirety of this series, it's all sort of coursing through the unfolding of this story. Maybe I'm <laughs> sort of just fanboying a little bit more and, you know, expounding off of that and just talking it up much bigger than it was. But that's the way I'm left feeling. And uh, that's pretty much all I can talk about. I'm left feeling by the end. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below if you've seen The Magician's Apprentice, if you loved it as much as I did, if you were as moved and just, you know, gobsmacked as I was with the reveals of who the villain, the returning villain would be, uh, Missy's and Clara's, you know, interactions and their sort of cause and effect in the story and all that kind of stuff, seeing all the multiple kinds of Daleks finally you know we were promised that a couple seasons back now a couple series back and um you know it's arguable whether or not we got what we were promised and I feel like we're finally getting that now you know special weapons Dalek baby come on you saw that sucker lighten up and getting ready to throw down in this episode it's just like for a Dalek fan like myself um I don't care as many times as they've been used and used and used again I welcome them every time they're on screen quite frankly I love them they are my favorite Doctor Who villain and that rapport that dynamic that history between the Doctor and Davros. It's on par with the Master for me as far as, you know, these are old school ties being messed around with and not in a negative way, in a positive gobsmacking way. And, um, <laughs> you know, I could go on all day. So I'd love to hear from you guys as I say in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this episode and uh, what you think it signals for the start of Series 9. Are we going to see the best series yet or not? Let me know. And, uh, yeah, otherwise that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well. And I'll catch you all later. Peace.